No, this is the table. This is how we used to sit, the five of us sitting around the table. We can see bright, sunny afternoon, midsummer. We had a job, such a job blacking out, but this is it. We sat there and you can see we're laughing because as we sat to show how it was reconstructed, how we sat for that first year and what happened with the table, the table started to wriggle. And it was vibrating and wriggling under our hands. You can see there's a wooden spoon, there's a rattle, there are temple bells, and there's my little bell at the end there, and that my little bell is here. Still got that one. And it, it continued to wriggle and jiggle and jiggle about. And this is what happened. In broad daylight, it did what it did in darkness. It wriggled and wriggled and wriggled. And as you can see, you can see it's still moving because you can see Angela's hands are quite sharp and Peter's very sharp. But the bells are blurred and the spoon is blurred because it was still wriggling and moving. And in the movement, it wriggled all the bells across because we had a chalk line down the centre of the table where we put everything to start with just to find out how much things moved. Now my little bell never moved. It was it was it wasn't glued down, it wasn't anchored, but it just stayed still. And the others all had all shifted from this center line across the table. Well we were in hysterics. We didn't need darkness. <laughs> and you know, as we know, we, you don't need darkness for table movement. But this is what was happening. Uh, and when we'd done that, we then took the table out and be able to sit and uh, have normal sitting. Now, one evening when we were doing this, in fact, I think it was the same evening, where we sat with the table, there were just the five chairs. But when we'd taken it out, we decided we could have a couple of other chairs so that if we had visitors came to, to sit with us, or if spirit visitors wanted to come and sit down, we'd have extra chairs. Well, one evening, Angela said, when somebody was, knew somebody was walking around, they said, um, what, take a seat? Why don't you? When we put the lights on, they literally had. They'd take the chair and put it in the middle of the circle, move the stool that she was here in the centre across and put the chair right in front of Angela. They had literally taken a seat. This is how it was before we started. When we, we did a mock-up to say, well, this is how it was when we started. Our two empty chairs, that was my chair at the end there. And this is what it was like. So they moved the little stool across towards Peter in the cabinet and, and then moved the chair. Another night, so we had a lot of, of telekinesis, a lot of disturbance. This one night, when we pulled the curtain back from the cabinet, we found the drawers had been opened on the bureau. Don't know where the, the carrier bag had come from. I think it was further across in the lounge part. And the greyhound had been on the glass cabinet on the other side of the circle behind Angela. So that, we didn't know that had moved. It had been moved right across the room and onto the floor. We had so much activity. But then going on from there, we also had party nights. One night, after the, during the circle, one of the little girls said she wanted a party. And this is by this time we actually had direct voice because Janet's mediumship had just developed at a, an amazing rate. And we had voices in the air. And Jenny, one of the little girls, said, I want a party. So we said, OK, <clears throat> we'll, we'll have a party after the circle. Would you want the table? Yes. And so we'd put the, the dining table back in its place. And we always, this is the lounge area. And this 
night Tom had taken his video camera because he'd been making the DVD, which no doubt a lot of you have seen on, on the YouTube. And he said, well, we can do this. So we can, we can actually film some various bits and pieces. And this is just part of um, a piece that was 13 minutes long. But this is, and I hope I've done share sound, this is <laughs> Here I go on my way Wish me luck as you wave me goodbye Here I go on my way Making game Give me a smile I can keep for a while In my heart while I'm away Till we meet once again you and I Wish me luck as you wave me goodbye <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think we're done yet. And down again, and when they were up, they were up, and when they were down, they were down, and when they were only halfway up, they were neither up nor down. That's good, friends. That's great. Can you lift it back up again now? Please, can you? Come on then. Come on, Bobby. Let's have to go on. further still. Yes. <laughs> go further still. We're going to slide. Oh, come, oh, on. Come, come on. Come on then. Come didn't on. touch the floor. Come on. Good oh, on. Come on then. Come on. Oh, he's going to touch the floor no. now. <laughs> <laughs> All the way down. That's, that's it. Now. Is that? Oh, look at that. That's it. 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 And our pretty city bang bang, chitty chitty bang bang, loves us to take a small bar in a month to come. What type of time we'll spend? Bang bang, chitty chitty bang bang, our five fourth and a friend. Bang bang, chitty chitty bang bang, our five fourth and a friend. You're more than a motor car, you're more than a motor car, you're more than a motor car, you're That was just a, a, a short piece of the, of the whole thing. But I thought you'd love to see the piece where the table goes so far over that it should have fallen. It should have collapsed, but they had it absolutely under control. So. That is just part, just a snippet. But let me say we moved on to having direct voice, having to feel them walking around in front of us, to feel that in the darkness something past your legs. I remember one evening saying, oh, it feels as though a large dog has walked past me. And a voice behind me said, my robes. <laughs> the guide... Janet's main guide was Grey Wolf. And <laughs> it was like having a large wolf pass me. But I often had him speaking behind me. If I was sitting next to Janet, he would be at the side of me. In fact, the spare chair between my Janet and myself, because uh, later on, uh, Janet and Angela swapped places and Janet was sitting beside me. And where we had a chair there, he said, take the chair away, I need space. So it was showing how, how solid he was standing beside me. And in fact, later on, Janet and Peter came to sit uh, at our house when we had our circle uh, at Brayton. We were only a few miles away from Pontefract. And one night they wanted to do something and 
Tom was sitting in the cabinet. Janet was beside me, as she often was when we were sitting. And Peter was the other side of me. And there were just the four of us. And I felt a poke on my back, on my shoulder. And then a tap on the light. Uh, tap, 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 tap. And I said, it's strange, somebody's tapping the light. It's as though... We we don't put the light on now. Not when not when Janet's gone into trance. Not at this stage of the of the sitting. No tap 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 poke 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 on my shoulder again. Tap 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 again. I said, "If I've done it again," and with that I heard Anne, light, this deep voice right behind my ear. So, Grey Wolf. I was, oh, sorry, Grey Wolf. We turn the light on to see Janet beside me, hunched deformed, crippled, and in, in a very strange position. And we realised that she was, somebody had drawn very close to her and that we were actually expected to do a rescue. We had to sit and think and concentrate on Janet, on this person that was with her, and talk and persuade him. Right, you're all right, you're okay, you're safe. Can you see that bright light? Can you see that lady coming towards you? She's coming to help you. She's coming to be with you. And we talked and talked and talked until finally Janet relaxed and the de deformity went and she just sat back in her chair. And whoever it was had gone. I was safe now, had gone, been taken into the spirit world. The following week, they actually told us that this lady was a deaf, blind, mute. Not only was she crippled, but she had no senses and she didn't know what had happened. And she just knew she was here. She didn't even realise she was dead. She was still here on earth. But they'd managed her, with our help, they had managed to get her safely into spirit. It's a very great honour to be able to do something like that. And some people say, oh no, everybody's safe, everybody goes. No, doesn't seem like it. There are some who don't, who don't know anything, who have no idea what's happening. So that was, that was just wonderful. But that's how solid he was that he could poke my shoulder.